Verstappen. <laughs> Max Verstappen, you are the world champion. The world champion. Max, we are so proud of you. Oh my God, guys. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> you have driven like a champion all year. You deserve that. We needed a bit of luck. You got it. You made it happen. And we love you. We absolutely fucking love you. It is unbelievable, guys. <laughs> Can we do this for another 10, 50 years together? <laughs>
the uh, first race week in Bahrain, we had Christian Horner getting exonerated for whatever allegations were made against him. On the very next day, the alleged evidence of the investigation, well, it leaked. It was leaked in an email to all the media publication, the FIA, the FOM, and apparently the team principals as well. Now, once this happened, on the very next day, you had Christian Horner's wife flying down to Bahrain and she stood alongside him during the podium ceremony. We also had the Thai major shareholder also making an appearance and standing next to Horner in what was basically a show of strength or support for the team principal. Finally, however, when everyone thought that if, uh, that the situation might get normalized now, we had Joss Verstappen openly calling out Christian Horner and pretty much saying that Horner needs to go. If we have to sum it up, if we have to sum up the entire civil war and whatever takeaways that are actually we can glean out of whatever has been known and whatever has been reported, it does appear that there is probably a rift between the Thai shareholders and the Austrian part of Red Bull. And the Thai part of Red Bull is, it seems, in support of Christian Horner, while the Austrian part, it wants to get rid of him. The reasoning behind, well, there are a few theories, but I don't think it's it makes sense to get into that because it is still conjecture. Other than that, I honestly felt it was a bit of a surprise that Joss Verstappen stood up and instead of taking Horner's side in all of this situation and showing solidarity, he went in an entirely tangential direction where he basically called out Horner and wanted him out of the team. So when you have that, it raises questions. And again, it adds fuel to the fire that all of a sudden, the Dutch publication has become one of the forefront source of news in this entire scandal. And yours is Dutch. How is that happening? There are quite a few who have tried to put the pieces together, but well, even more information continues to come out. Now, in the last few hours before I recorded, there have been reports that the person who made the complaint against Christian Horner has a relationship with Joss Verstappen. Now, whether, th whether that's true or not, I really don't know. However, another major development, in my view, is that Max Verstappen has thrown his weight behind his father and he says that he's in completely in support with whatever his father does. So that's where we stand when it comes to the Red Bull Civil War and it does appear that we are looking at a scenario. We have Christian Horner and the Thai ownership on one side and for now, on the other side, we might have Joss Verstappen, Max Verstappen as well. And they've already made it clear that Max Verstappen will leave the team if Christian Horner does not resign. So when that's the scenario, it's safe to say that either Horner leaves or Verstappen leaves. And that is a decision that is going to shake the roots of this entire partnership. Now, with that being discussed, let's take a look at the possible fallout in this entire situation. Now, the, now there are three possible fallouts that could be there. The first is Christian Horner leaves the team and Max Verstappen stays. The second is Max Verstappen leaves the team, Christian Horner stays. And the third scenario is neither leave the team and they reach a certain agreement. Now, in my view, at least for now, it does appear that the third option is the least probable one. However, let's go through each of them and let's see what kind of after effects it has on the entire structure. First of all, let's assume Horner is the one who leaves the team. Now, in this scenario, if Horner is the one who leaves the team, I think it's safe to say that in short term, there might be there might not be too much of a difference because such is the advantage that Red Bull has at this stage. It's not going to affect the 2024 season or the 2025 season. Neither of them are going to get affected by whatever happens in the long term. It's going to play a major role. Ford is sitting in America and it is observing everything. Christian Horner is the man who is responsible for this deal. And if you take a look at the entire scenario, it is basically a Christian Horner hit job. There have been pressure put on him. There have been steps taken to malign his name. And it is basically all of this is done just to remove him from his position. Now, when that is done and whoever replaces him, will Ford even have the confidence in such a, an organization where such deep politics is actually going on? You have to question that. Even if you leave that on one side, what about the morale of Milton Keynes? Now, I've, I've had a chance to talk to a few employees that are working in Red Bull right now, and almost everyone adores Christian Horner. And the morale has been down ever since this entire situation began in January. And again, with this thing getting stretched, there is clearly impact even back at Milton Keynes. Imagine if Horner is pushed out of the team, a team that he has built from day one. He's been leading the entire structure for 20 years now. And if he's being forced to leave, what kind of impact will it have on the rest of the squad? Will we look at something similar to the resource drain that Mercedes had? We might. What about Adrian Newey? Will he be happy with the way Horner is treated? Because at the end of the day, the, the entire system, the entire saga that began in January, it's it reeks of political power play. 
to add to this what about the red bull power train even that is something that is being led by christian honor and again that is something that he has put together himself when you take all these things into consideration in short term you might not see much of an impact max verstappen will still win the 2024 world championship and it's highly likely that he wins the 2025 world championship but slowly and steadily things start to unravel and slowly and steadily i don't think in 2026 red bull will be considered the same formidable force that it is right now if christian honor is not present now let's take a look at the second scenario where max verstappen leaves and christian honor stays Now in the long term again this might offend a few Max Verstappen fans but in the long term the impact might not be as big because at the end of the day the structure builds the team and the structure builds the car and when the structure is in place and the man who has actually put everything together if he's still there then you can assure yourself that that the entire thing would still be in place the driver of course on the driver side we can say that in the short term the impact will be felt i mean who replaces Max Verstappen will it be a fernando alonso will it be who else is there who's which who's which driver has not renewed his contract yet none of the elite drivers are actually present other than fernando alonso even if red bull buys out a contract of any other driver on the current grid can anyone perform at the level at which verstappen does at the moment the answer to that is no no driver comes close and that is something that red bull will have in mind when it replaces max verstappen with anyone else sure red bull will still win the titles Heck, even right now, Red Bull might win the title with Sergio Perez, such as the dominance of the car. But will it have the same success? Will it have the same results? Will it have the 21 out of 22 wins? Probably not. And that is still a major impact. Most importantly, a generational talent, arguably one of the 10 best drivers ever, will leave your team. And that is certainly a loss that a Red Bull will feel at least in the short run. and the third scenario i think well if both christian honor and uh, the verstappens they reach an agreement and we get back to work well if that happens i think that's the best case scenario for the red bull fans and the max verstappen fans and even for the entire situation at least for now having said that the cracks are already there how long they can paper over it i don't know but uh, i think this situation it's it's a bit untenable if it does happen however great it would be great for great news for both red bull and max verstappen to an extent But yeah, that is the situation where we are at the moment, unfortunately. Now, finally, before I end the video, I think there's something we should actually talk about, and that is the fact that every dominant stint in F1 it has actually ended due to arrogance and due to overconfidence. In my view, right now, it is that overconfidence that is hurting this entire Red Bull Max Verstappen empire. Now, again. Personally, there is arrogance from Jos Verstappen that either Red Bull would be willing to check out the man who is actually the architect of this entire dominance, and that is Christian Horner, and someone who has actually built the team from scratch. That is the kind of arrogance that does not work. Or on the other hand, he might have this arrogance that if Max Verstappen moves to another team, he can again seamlessly start winning. I think there will be a reality check for him and Max if they go through with this. I hope they don't because you should not take dominance in Formula 1 for granted. Mercedes took Formula 1's dominance for granted in 2022 when it persevered with a zero sipper concept because they thought the team had produced 8 consecutive years of fastest car. It can do it again. Similarly, Red Bull itself in 2014 was a victim of complacency. It did not account for the kind of impact a poor power unit could have on the performance. Similarly, if Ferrari had not been complacent and had not pretty much forced out Michael Schumacher by signing Kimi Raikkonen in 2006, maybe the future of Ferrari could have been different. Similarly, if we go further back, maybe Williams should not have let Adrian Newey go. If that had not happened, maybe the success of the team could have continued. There are far too many pages in history where teams have taken dominance for granted and ultimately paid for it. Right now we are at the epicenter of the Red Bull Max Verstappen empire which is just beginning to collapse. There are few tiny stones that are just starting to break. That is where we are at the moment. And if this arrogance continues, we are looking at a split. And if that happens, the empire is done and dusted. So yeah, the, these are my views on the entire situation. Do let me know what you think. Uh share your views in the comments and please leave a like. subscribe to the channel and uh, thanks for watching i'll see you next time